continuing on with our friend app. In this video, we're gonna add the query and insert methods to our content provider code. So let's get into that. Okay, so moving on, let's talk, uh, let's create our query method. The query method is used to return a list of records from the SQLite database to the calling process. And that's another override, so I'm going to do a command N again. Again, Alt insert if you're on a PC. Override methods, and the one I want is called query. Now there's a few queries here. I'm just going to select the first one from the list. So I'm just going to press enter. And you can see all those parameters. We do actually have to pass those parameters when we're calling this, but we'll make sense of those when we get to that stage. So let's create access to our database. So I'm going to type SQLite database. DB equals M. Use our M open helper dot get readable database. This is another function that it provides. Because this is a query, we're just returning data from the database. We're not updating anything. We don't need to write to the database, so we can just use the get readable database. So we've now got an instance of our database ready to have data retrieved from it. Next, we want to find out what was passed to this method. So we need to use our int match equals s uri matcher dot match again, the uri. We need to define what to do. So next we need to uh, use the SQLite query builder. So we're building up a list uh, or like a statement so that uh, SQLite can return the data for us. So we're gonna start by putting query builder equals new SQLite query builder. So we'll start off by adding the tables we want. So set tables, of course there's only one table so that makes it simple. Tables dot friends. Now we need to do a switch to find out what the commands are, and I'll explain the reasons why we need to do this. Friends, do nothing. Break, case, friends, underscore ID. Okay, so let me explain what we're doing here. Now you can imagine that when you send a query, so there's two options here that we might want to work with. Option one is we want a list of all the friends, all the friends in the entire table in that database. And in the second case, we might want to work with only the one uh, friend. So in other words, we want to just retrieve the data for that one record. So in those cases, if we were looking for the URI, if we just get a friend URI, in other words, that's the, the content provider path is set, but the ID is not set, that means return everything. If however, an ID is sent to us in the URI, what that means is we need to process just that one record. So we need to write some more code in here, in that case, to break it down. So to do that, I'm just type string ID equals friends contract dot dot friends dot get friend ID. And we're going to pass the URI. So that's going to extract out the ID that's passed to us. From there, we can type query builder dot append where. So we're adding a where clause. If you remember the where clause was we're breaking down the amount of data so we want to return only certain records. And what we want to do is we want to put where the base columns dot underscore ID, whoops, ID equals plus ID. And then break. I'll explain that shortly. We'll just finish this off. And default is going to be, oops, we're just going to copy that same code from up here and paste that in there to make it valid. So we've, uh, we've appended a where clause. It's essentially to say, if you recall your SQL from previous videos, we'll be doing this. If, we get, if it goes through here to friends, it'll be to select a star from a friends. But here under the ID, what we're doing is we select a star from friends where, append where is adding an, that option where the ID is equal to the ID that we've extracted from the incoming URI, what has been passed to us. I hope that makes sense. So we have to extract that out and that filters the returning data essentially. Okay, so we are finished with that switch. Then what we need to do now is now create a cursor of that data and return it to the calling process. So cursor equals query builder dot query query and that obviously needs some options so db and you'll see these fields that I'm typing in here 
uh, essentially straight from the top uh, of the calling method, what's been called, uh, we've used calling this. Function args, I'll just finish them first and we'll talk about it. And I forgot a couple of parameters there. Okay, so projection, just so you are clear, when you see the word project, projection in content providers, that means the list of columns that you want to return. Selection is a where clause, so uh, there might already be a where clause. We're ignoring that in this particular case, but you'll see in the update procedure later on, we're going to be looking at that selection. Selection arguments is again is the arguments relating to the selection. In this case, there's none, but we're just passing what passing on to the query what has been sent through to us, and likewise with the sort order which we're not using. So we're not going to return null, we're going to return cursor. So that's the code that will now automatically grab the data from the database, whether we've selected all data or just a record from a, or just one record. Okay, so moving on, the next function we need to override is the insert function. So I'm going to do my command N, override, insert. You can see the first one there, insert. I'm going to press enter to that. Now, we're going to start work on that. And you can see straight away, what we might do is add a bit of logging here. Let's just add log. Tag. We'll put insert URI equals URI plus values equals plus values dot to string. So what we've done there, we've just we're going to output purely the URI that's been passed to us. But this here, the content values, that is a list of content values for our database. In other words, the name, the phone, and the email address. Now they are passed to us from the calling process. So think of content values like an array list or something like that. We'll be talking more, it's, probably, it's more a dictionary, but we'll be talking more about that in a future video and you'll see it in operation. Really all it is, right now all you need to worry about is to know that the content values contains the column names and the values we want associated when we're writing to the database. So okay, so we've got to log that out and you'll see what that is on the screen when we go to log it out. And again, we need to do similar code up here. We need our SQLite database and we need our matching purposes. Switch. Match. Case friends. So this one, because it's an insert, we're only going to use the friends. We're not going to use the friends underscore ID. So first thing we need to do is we need to try and save this. So to do that, we type long record ID. So this will be the ID that's passed back to us. Equals db dot insert or throw. And it's going to be table dot friends. Table friends, column hack is usually always null, so I'm going to leave that null. And the content values, which I just talked about, we're passing directly to it. So what will happen with that one line of code, it's automatically sent to SQLite. It'll create the new record uh, in the table if it can, and it will automatically return the ID number that was associated into that record ID. And what we're going to do is we're going to return a URI, which would enable the calling process to access that record. So to do that, we're going to type return friends contact contract friends dot build friend URI string dot value record ID. So what we've done there is we've used this function in here, the build friends, build friend URI I should say. So we're returning the contact URI and we're appending the ID to it as well. So what we're doing is we're grabbing this first component here, the content URI. Remember that was the base component plus the path of friends, so it's a slash friends slash, and we're also returning whatever the ID was for that record that was saved. So when we get back to the to the calling process, it's going to be able to have, it's got the complete URI to access that uh, particular record that has just been added to the database. And you'll see that in a future video in operation. Okay, so we've done that. So that's friends. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're just going to do for anything else that's sent to us, we're just going to throw an exception. 
So in this particular method, the insert method, so the only option we're allowing is a path set to friends. And of course, we're also getting the content values so that we can actually write the data. And that's it. Okay, so we're finished with this video now. In the next video, we're going to move on to the update and delete methods for our content provider.